Welcome to the Finding Joy in Education podcast. I am your host, Sarah Painter. You are listening to episode three, Finding Joy Through Student Engagement. In our first segment today, this is our Toy Story segment. I have Mr. Gerard Madrinen. He is our 2024 Pinellas County Teacher of the Year. He's also a band director at Seminole High School. Gerard, thank you for joining us today and for being in the studio. Thank you. Um, I always ask every guest before we begin to tell me your story. So Gerard, what's your story? Well, I'm the band director at Seminole High School, but I started off as a safety patrol at Bowder Elementary (laughs) right across the street. And then I was at Seminole Middle School. I was the outstanding sixth grader and eighth grader in the band there. (laughs) Um, And then I got to high school. I had a great time in high school, and that's part of what guided me back to Seminole High School. I was the drum major there. Uh, I did uh, University of South Florida for my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. Um, Something that I like telling people is that I started off as an elementary school music teacher for Mm -hmm. six years. I was very reluctant at first, and then I really... Uh, like it kind of pulled me in. And the more that I understood those students and uh, what they needed, the more I really cared about it. Yeah. Uh, And so when Seminole High School came open, my mentor uh, decided to move on. Um, It was kind of a struggle. It was this thing that I I just kind of ironically started doing. uh, And then I just uh, resonated so well with elementary. Uh, But then uh, I did move on to Seminole High School and I've been there for the last 11 years. So you went from elementary to high school. That's correct. How was that transition? Um, it, I, I really wear it as a badge of honor because in elementary, as you know, uh, you need to be really strong with process. Yes. You need to be really strong with your plan. Yep. And um, I, you know, just kind of knowing my high school colleagues, uh, uh, sometimes you can kind of shoot from the hip a little bit. Yeah. It, it can be a little bit more casual and pedestrian in high school. And so that kind of became a strength of mine with elementary. And I definitely revisit and exercise that on a daily basis with my elementary, uh, with my high school students. Wonderful. So today we're talking all about student engagement. I think you have an interesting perspective as a band teacher. Right. So Gerard, what I want to hear is how do you define student engagement and why? Why do you think it's essential for education? Well, uh, student engagement for me, when when I first think of that concept is every student is wired differently. They bring to uh, the table their unique experiences and backgrounds. And so when we talk about the engagement piece in a classroom, uh, on paper, it can look the same for everybody. However, we know that, uh, especially at the high school level, students aren't just juggling what the objective or the learning goal is for the class. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're also dealing with how they woke up that day, what else might be going on at home, and uh, especially with high school, what's going on socially. Right. (laughs) And so we're trying to connect all of those elements. So student engagement to me is how do we connect and let each student in our class feel heard? Because once they have that trust that they are being um, valued, that they are being respected, that they are being seen uh, with with all the different rigmaroles that they're bringing to their table, uh, then they'll be safe to kind of gain and open up in our classrooms. So what are some of the perceived barriers to student engagement, especially in high school? So what are the things that maybe could impede having successful student engagement in the room? Yeah, I mean, I think it it kind of starts and ends with trust. Yes. Um, the more that a student can feel like um, they are valued. Like, for example, when I was an intern, um, uh, a student came up to me, and, and this person went on to major in music and perform professionally and uh, was just outstanding, just stellar um, potential, and pulled me aside and told me, you know, you always let us out on time. And I just want you to know that that goes a really long way with some of us. Wow. And so <laughs> they, they told me that um, 15, 16 years ago. And, you know, it's such a mundane thing to just sure. make sure that, you you know, you have time to pack up. You have time to maybe even stand around for four seconds before the bell rings. Yeah. But you are standing there. You're, you're not you're not listening to someone ramble on and on or think to themselves like a student might think, you know, the only thing this teacher is concerned about is what they have. Their own agenda. Right. Right. Thinking that like the student might have a big test in the next period or they might have needed four seconds to like finish like a homework or, or, you know, or gluing something together for a project they're submitting. And so all of those aspects, I've always thought to myself, you know, the more that uh, we can show students that we respect 
not not only like maybe they're doing something great in our class, but recognizing that they might be really into science. They might mm -hmm. be into writing. They might not want to do anything with school and they just want to work with cars or yeah. all they care about is really sports, but they also kind of dabble in music. So just appreciating that students are, come from different places yes. and just letting them know like that maybe I don't know about those things, but I'm asking them about it because I know that they do it. And you talked about trust, which is built through that relationship building piece, which I know is huge for you. <laughs> right. I, and, you know, just another aspect of trust is sometimes high school students, as we all know, just like everybody, they're not perfect. Right. They're going to make a mistake uh, or sometimes they're going to need like something selfish. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy. And I think a lot of times students are anticipating uh oh, I messed up. Yeah. Here comes the axe. Yeah. Here comes the consequence or the punishment. And to show them either kindness or patience or um, just understanding of where they're coming from, uh, it's enabled me to like kind of like give them that hug that they need. Yeah. And a lot of times that helps them get further than just, you know, laying down the law or like dropping the hammer or all, mm -hmm. all those things. So so walk us into your band room. If I were to walk in, what would student engagement look like? What are some of your go-to strategies that you like to use and leverage with your students? Right. So um, my uh, middle school band director, th how about this for like a circular story? <laughs> um, I ended up interning with that same band director when I was in my undergrad at USF. Oh, wow. And uh, then that same band director ended up leaving middle school to teach elementary, which I had just completed half a dozen years with. So they interned with me. <laughs> And then they, they ended up moving from that to being a staff developer at the school district when they retired. So mm -hmm. it was just this whole circle of life type of thing. But um, my middle school band director told me, don't forget to give them a little bit of dessert. Mm -hmm. And so like in the uh, band like kind of lesson plan. There is technique. A lot of students don't like that because it's kind of boring. Uh, there are fundamentals. Those are even more boring. <laughs> and then, you know, we're working on our objective pieces, our masterworks and like, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to tackle all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also like always going to be something that the student enjoys playing too. Yes. And so like, can we kind of um, play all of the things that every student wants? And it's co so neat because we're talking about music and music is just so, like all the colors of the rainbow. Yep. It's a wide spectrum of yep. things. Of course not. But to, um, Offer that as kind of part of what we do every day is is, is something that again we're, when we're talking about teenagers in high school uh, and sometimes we don't give them enough credit that they they can be complex and sophisticated and they can appreciate mm -hmm. and they can be grateful. Uh, that's just something where we might work on scales and tuning and long tones and sonority, and then we're working on our festival evaluation pieces, and then take out this piece that we're going to do for the spring concert or we're going to do this for a pep rally and let's play that just for maybe the last two minutes that's the dessert that my middle school mm -hmm. band director mm -hmm. Mr. Tag shout out to you uh, <laughs> was was talking about I love it so it's kind of balancing what we have to do but also what you want to do yeah, right yeah. like making sure there's a marriage there right. between that and the neat part when you say balance is that's a musical term as well <laughs> and so we think about mixing and blending and mm -hmm. balancing yeah so um when you are planning for student engagement, what does that look like? How much of it, I guess, is planned and how much of it happens in the classroom just naturally? Well, you know, the neat part about music, and I think, you know, we could probably say lesson planning at large is that a lot of it is intuitive. Mm -hmm. Like when we put things down on paper, we can kind of see with our eyes the balance right. and the blending of, of what we're doing so that as it comes to life in the classroom, we're, yeah, we plan that. And so a lot of it for us is down to minutes. You know, if we have a 46 minute um, instructional period that really comes down to about 38 and a half minutes of seat time for us. And so you know that we have to play long tones. We have mm -hmm. to play scales. We have to play our festival assessment music. So each of those pieces go down as minutes and uh, we just make sure that we always save some minutes for dessert. Yes. I love that. I love that <laughs> so much. So before we wrap up our time together today, Gerard, I want to give you a moment to share a joy story. So when I ask for a joy story, I want you to think back to maybe a student or a colleague or an administrator that you have a specific fond memory of that when you go back into that memory and think about it, it connects you to your why. So share with us a joy story. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, uh, 
first, I love that it's called a joy story. That's just so beautiful. And I'm going to make this one about my principal, Dr. Lucas. And, uh, I promise I'm not just taking the low-hanging <laughs> fruit and pointing out my, my boss now. But uh, Dr. Lucas is a very unique principal for me because my senior year when I was in 12th grade at Seminole High School and I was the drum major, Dr. Lucas was just Miss Lucas <laughs> and it was her first year as the band director at Seminole High School. Wow. So um, we have this kind of long uh, paired journey together. And um, as the drum major, I conducted the marching band and uh, Dr. Lucas, who was a great musician and she's just this like burst of energy. Um, they say the 2000 watt smile, that, <laughs> that's Dr. Yeah. Lucas. And um, I was a very proud, probably arrogant, a little too sure of himself, um, 17 year old conductor of the marching band. And uh, that was kind of my my, my domain, I, that was my turf. I was really proud of it. Mm -hmm. And so every time this new teacher who is the second band director in the program would watch us work, I really strutted my stuff. And I thought that the students at that time, all of my bandmates, the, the whole marching band team was just awesome. And so... <laughs> It was like in the middle of September, in the middle of the football season, I'm getting ready to climb up onto the drum major podium with the other drum major who's still one of my best friends, Scott Reeves, who's now a lawyer in Washington, D.C. Wow. And um, as we're getting up on the podium, Dr. Lucas stops me to say, you know what, man, you're just so awesome. And I'm like... Oh, do tell. Keep, keep, <laughs> just keep telling. Just keep laying it on, Dr. Lucas. Stop, uh, Miss Lucas. Stop. Yeah, yeah, right. Please stop. No, but keep going. And she's just like, when you conduct this one part in the show, and it was a very like complex thing with like the drums were wailing and the horns were playing really loud and the color guard was spinning. She's like, you always hold it together. And it is just so amazing. I have no idea how you do it. And I'm just like, oh, shucks, you know? And so then I climb up on the podium. And the funny part was, is that that night, uh, the whole band fell apart at that moment. <laughs> And uh, I've actually never really retold the story. It's been like 20 plus years. Um, and ever since she gave that com comment for the rest of the month of September, October, until our season ended in November, uh, I never quite held that moment together. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it was like a really interesting um, kind of like foray for me into modesty. And thank you for teaching me humility, Miss Luke. <laughs> absolutely. And I've, I've carried that one with me ever I just, since. I love how your stories are so intertwined with colleagues and, and teachers right. that you had and right. that you're still connected to. I think that's one of the beautiful things of education. It is. Are those people we meet along the way that we bring with us that follow and whether our journeys go in different directions, just that we, yeah. we take those little life skills with us that we've learned from them. Yeah. And, and you know, to that, that end, I can tell you every day that I'm in the classroom with the students, I talk about these kinds of mm -hmm. things. And I just, I tell them, I want them to see that I, I love my job. I, I love coming in every morning to work with them, to collaborate with them, to problem solve with them. And I do think that they kind of see that that conviction with me. And I, I hope that it spreads to them, that yeah. they can kind of seek and search like a, a sunset and a horizon, like yeah. what I found. Thank you so much, Gerard. We are so very proud of you here in Pinellas County um, for becoming the 2024 Pinellas County Teacher of the Year. But thank you for being on the podcast today and for sharing your insight on student engagement. I'm just so grateful to know you and to continue to grow our relationship as well. I'm absolutely honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Finding Joy in Education. I'm your host, Sarah Painter. And joining me today for our Leadership Lens, we have Chris Boulanger, Principal at New Heights Elementary School here in Pinellas County, and Megan Hatfield, Assistant Principal at East Lake High School. Um, thank you both for being here today and for giving us some time with you so we can talk about student engagement. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. So I always ask all of our guests, what's your story? So I'm gonna start with you, Megan. What's your story? So I guess I can start at the very beginning. I have always loved learning and I've always loved education. I'm the last of seven kids and I used to make my mother give me homework. We had to buy a chalkboard and everything. So I always kind of was destined to be in education and be a teacher. So all throughout school, I was just the teacher's pet wanting to get involved and help grade and help all of those things in the classroom. I loved everything about school, the classroom, learning, all of that. 
helping with lessons, just being that kind of teacher's pet. Um, and so then when I went, I got my bachelor's in ad adolescent education in social studies, and then my master's in educational psychology, which is the why and how of learning. Mm -hmm. Why does it occur? So that really fascinated me. Um, moved to Florida about 11 years ago and taught social studies at the middle and high school level, and then uh, for about eight years, and then joined Pinellas County Schools in the Office of Strategic Planning and Policy, um, where we planned different district initiatives, and I got really involved in that, all while um, getting my education specialist degree and a doctorate degree in educational leadership, so continuing that lifelong learner aspect. Um, and then just really getting involved in those initiatives at the district level made me miss being involved and seeing them put into action. Yeah. So this year I am assistant principal at East Lake High School and loving every minute of it and working with students and teachers and just getting a lot of school spirit and all of those things that I wasn't able to see um, from the district level and really being on the ground is, is just very fun for me. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about student engagement. It seems like you've had multiple roles that you're probably using those expertise moments Absolutely. in every day at your job. Chris, what's your story? I mean, I got to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> so my story might be on the complete opposite end of that spectrum <laughs> where when I was in school, <laughs> not so great. I was, I was every teacher's nightmare. Um, I was the fourth in a long line of uh, Boulanger boys. And uh, I wore out all my teachers, unfortunately. I, I talked a lot and made some poor decisions. Um, so, but I will say that I, even reflecting back to that, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher because I think school wasn't super fun for me mm -hmm. and it wasn't engaging. Um, so for some reason, and I, I really honestly can't point to an exact moment or thought that I, I just knew I wanted to teach and I knew I wanted to make school fun for somebody because mm -hmm. if it wasn't going to be fun for me, it might as well be fun for somebody else. So that was kind of the direction I took. Um, came down here for Florida, uh, for Florida, came down here for a school in Florida, uh, Lakeland. And um, that was a culture shock <laughs> moving from Connecticut. But um, I, I, I went through the school up there, uh, ended up uh, taking my first job over here in Pinellas County at Eisenhower Elementary School. Um, I heard you had a really incredible teammate for quite a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about her. Tell I'll tell you what, Mrs. Downs was a <laughs> No. And, and I taught fifth grade for a while, fourth grade. And then um, this teacher just showed up one day and she needed me to take her under her wing oh and kind of show her what direction to go in. As a, I'm kidding. Um, I had the pleasure <laughs> of working with the state Florida teacher of the year. I tell people that and they go, no, you didn't. Um, and we taught together for, gosh, That was some years. of the best uh, teaching of years of my life was for sure. when we team taught together. Yeah, I taught math and science. You did not. <laughs> um, I did the other stuff. Word on the street is you actually ended up teaching math and science. At I one point. did, and I did pretty well, I obviously. Know. Uh, I know. Look so. at us. We got a podcast. So now. now you're an educational leader. Tell me how you, like what that. led you to <clears throat> to that. Um, I just it, it continued to be a thought in my head, and I, I'm somebody that kind of takes things as the I, as as the comfort comes, I guess. Um, in where I, I let the, I, I guess I left my direction kind of come when I'm comfortable and I see opportunity, right? So in the classroom, it was awesome. I loved my kids. It was me and those 22 kids, and it was me and those 44 kids, mm -hmm. and nobody else existed. And I've always kind of had that mindset, and I wanted to do more, and I wanted to impact more kids. And so I took on an MTSS role while going to school, um, and I had uh, Principal Sandy Downs mm -hmm. kind of tap me on the shoulder and go, bud, when are you doing this? And yeah. kind of push me towards that leadership thing, and I did. Um, and from MTSS, I jumped to uh, the AP over at New Heights and um, took over as the principal three or three years or so ago and mm -hmm. been there loving it ever since. Awesome. I love it. So when we talk about student engagement, I really want to dig into what that looks like on your campuses. Um, what do you look for when you're looking for student engagement? How do you foster student engagement with your teachers? I want to hear all things student engagement. So Megan, I'm going to have you kind of answer that first. So I think it, it's going to look like different things depending on where you are on campus. So student engagement campus-wide is going to be something that really needs just a huge effort from all people involved, admin, 
your teachers, your support staff, your your cafeteria staff. Mm-hmm. It's gonna it's gonna be everywhere. And so to engage students in those school wide activities, it requires planning. Um, but it's so worth it. And just the rewards that you get by seeing students having fun at school, it just reaps many benefits. But then also engaging them in the classroom is going to yes. look different. Um, and it's gonna look like they're just involved. And I always tell the teachers that I work directly with, you know, here's a little cheat code for me. When I come into your classroom, just know, like, I'm just looking to see what students are doing. Mm -hmm. And so when students are doing things in the classroom, they're having those engaging experiences, their activities, um, they're doing hands-on learning. Um, That's how they make meaning out of what they're learning. Absolutely. They, They can do so much nowadays online. Um, and, you know, as a as a district, we've done a great job having all of these tech tools, mm-hmm. right? So we have Canvas, and that's wonderful, and it served an awesome purpose and still does for when students aren't able to come to school. They can access their learning from home. But we need to give them more than yeah. just that to get them in the classrooms wanting to be in school doing the learning, not just doing it on their own. Right, and I think the key to what you shared was it's students doing it, mm-hmm. right? Not the mm-hmm. teachers, because when the teachers are up there doing all the work, they're doing all the learning. And so when we shift that and we make sure that the students have that ownership and the students are doing the work, that's when student engagement really blossoms. Chris, what does student engagement look like at New Heights Elementary? So it, it's it's high energy. When we look to bring in team members, uh, it, it's always people with high energy um, because here's the deal. If starting at the top, if admin's not energized and in, in, in leading that charge on campus, then it goes, it, it spills into the rest of your team. And, you know, we want those classrooms to be enjoyable. We want those, cl- we, we want those classrooms to be full of joy mm-hmm. for, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term and to use your, is that, am I going to get charged for that? You might. Yeah. Okay. I'll bill you after All this right, Fair enough. Yeah. No, but um, it, it's an encouraging thing because if, if the teachers are creating an engaging classroom, they're enjoying their job, yes. right? Yep. And if they're not enjoying their job, guess who's not enjoying learning or, or learning anything? It's right. the kids. So it's always a push to kind of get people to, to just go, yeah, we've got all this to do, but let's have fun doing it. Yeah. Let's figure out a way to get yourself. So how do you do that? How do you bring the fun to your yeah. campus? Well, um, <laughs> one of the things is I have a past history um, Um, as a DJ. And so um, on Fridays, I DJ every couple Fridays. You got to build it up. Can't have it every Friday. Otherwise, kids are like, you got to start getting requests. Anyway, (laughs) so on Fridays, we we DJ DJ a whole set outside uh, as the kids are coming in at 8.15. And we just have an entire school dance party. It is 700 kids running around dancing. And the teachers, we're fortunate enough to have Two floors, mm-hmm. so people up on the second floor dancing outside. It, 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 it's a really cool opportunity to, number one, show that school's a fun place to be. Yes. And number two, to show that we're a community and a family that that, that is here together um, taking on this challenge that we face every day of learning and, and becoming a better people. So thinking about that fun, how do we leverage that fun and that engagement mm for it to contribute to academic achievement and learning outcomes. So I'll have you share first and then we'll go to Megan. So how does that lead to student learning outcomes? Yeah, so a couple things that we've looked into or leaned into this year have been, um, the it's, it's funny how semantics in education mean a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So two of the things that we use or two phrases that we use is evidence of learning and evidence of instruction. And talking to our, our, our instructional team about if we walk into your room right? Or you're in your classroom, because that's really what it's about. There's the teachers looking for that evidences of learning. What do you expect to see, Mm -hmm. right? And one of the activities we did this year to do that was a crime scene classroom where if the fire drill goes off and students walked out and we, and somebody walked into your room, would they be able to tell what was going on Mm -hmm. and what evidences were there? there, Is there kids taking notes? Is there um, a small group table? What's going on in the classroom? So to kind of highlight that. So really pushing the teachers to look for those evidences of, are the kids engaged in learning and what do you want? Because sometimes we don't think about that. We come up with these grandeur lessons and it's going to be great and right. yay, rah, rah, but we don't think about what I want the kids to be doing. Yeah. So um, that's something we've kind of pushed in on a little bit too. Um, and then the evidence of instruction, obviously, as well. So I feel like that leads, though, to intentional planning, right? Yeah, like to be sure. able to look mm-hmm. for those evidences, yeah. you have to have planted yeah. them. And you have to know yeah. before walking in that you're going yeah. to be looking for that. Yeah, and lean into that uncomfortable feeling sometimes of doing something new. Mike Tomlin had a great interview piece the other day of, you know, he loves coaches that run away from the coaching. It's running into that coaching and Mm -hmm. running into that uncomfortable feeling and running to the discomfort sometimes of trying something new. Mm -hmm. If it crashes and burns, it crashes and burns. Right. But you're all going to have a good time doing it. Right. Megan, how do you feel that the student engagement lends itself then to student outcome data? Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, like you said before, you know, if students are doing the learning, they're the ones who are equipped with those skills to then transfer that knowledge, apply that knowledge. Um, so when they're taking a test, the teacher's not there telling them what things mean. Mm -hmm. They are able to analyze. They're able to, you know, make connections to what they've already learned. And it stays in their mind because they enjoyed learning it, because they can remember and recall those activities that yeah. they did that had them learning it. So it's not just, oh, I took notes on this. Not that notes, you know, they have a purpose, but it's about what they did. So maybe they read an awesome article and they remembered working with the group and maybe it was a gamified uh, lesson mm -hmm. where they had a competition because we really like to play into the competitive nature as yes. teenagers mm -hmm. and all, mm -hmm. all kids, really all people. Teenagers right. are also very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when they have those experiences that they can remember and they can, you know, then apply their knowledge that they've gained to any task that we give them, it's going to have tremendous outcomes for their, you know, for their performance. And then just also for the teachers, because teachers really need to, to buy into that as well, because they want their students to do well. So when you can make things competitive for them as well, mm -hmm. um, that can also lend itself to good outcomes. Yeah. So before I ask you to share your joy stories, I just had a quick question about like, what structures do you have in place to ensure that teachers are thinking about student engagement? Mm -hmm. So from an administrator, what structures yeah. do you put in place to make sure those yeah, things are happening? And it, it's a great question because it, it's something that you have to be willing to constantly look at because if so the monitoring piece is what it is, right? right. So with my ILT team, who is an incredible group of people, um, we sit and we talk through like, what do we want to see in the classrooms and how do we provide feedback, meaningful feedback right. to teachers? Because it just can't be robotic and, and useless, right? So what are we going to give to teachers that's useful? And how can we present that? So we've developed a process in a, in a um, walkthrough form that's a quick five questions of things that we're looking for, what evidence of learning were present. Mm -hmm. And we list some things on there so we can quickly check it through. And immediately once we send that in, it sends a message to the teacher going, here's what we saw. Yeah. Right. And creating that culture of being willing to hear those things. So and then always being willing to go back and go, this isn't working. Reflecting. Yeah. And, and, and we're not getting what we need. Or the best thing that we've, you know, the conversations that we've gotten a lot more is, are the teachers responding to it? And if the answer is no, that's on us. Yeah. And we got to fix it. Yeah. And we got to give them tools because our job is that bulldozer to clear the path for them to do what they do best and, sure. and teach the kids. So yeah. um, how can we better do that? Yeah. What about you? What structures do you guys have in place to ensure that student engagement is kind of at the forefront of teachers' minds when they're planning? So we, we come to build our school improvement plan with those types of structures and strategies, right? Using the AVID strategies and then having bell-to-bell -bell instruction to maximize mm -hmm. engagement. But um, I've also really started working with the PLCs so that they are working together, mm -hmm. um, especially, for example, you know, U.S. history is a big one. And I'm, you know, with social studies teacher, I'm working mm -hmm. with them. Um, they might not have common planning, but on their planning period, they can visit each other, even sure. if it's for five, 10 minutes and yeah. just see, because they are teaching the same content. Yeah. And so it's not about critiquing, but it's about sharing strategies. Um, and, you know, seeing how someone is using a resource, let's say it's a document to analyze or an image, you know, seeing how one teacher is using it, you know, giving suggestions, oh, this is how I might use this, or, oh, why don't we develop some common questions we can use so it's across the board engagement it's not just going to be dependent on which teacher you have because mm -hmm. some teachers might you know be having students play games to learn and then other teachers are doing videos and so they're all using different strategies to teach and it's about pulling from the best of those strategies to work collaboratively to really um, have it so it doesn't matter who your teacher is you're still going to learn and get all those opportunities to learn in a fun engaging way yeah so it sounds like you provide space mm -hmm. for that to happen and then you have the feedback which is so necessary for teachers to be reflective and yeah. go is this working? Am I producing what they're looking for when they walk into this room? And is it matching to what I assume was going to happen when I taught this lesson? So um, before we go, I always ask my guests to share some joy stories. So this would be like a memorable success story or a story tied to a student or a colleague, a parent, an administrator, anyone that you've worked with that when you think back on this story, it connects you to your why and reminds you of why you're still in education. So Megan, would you share with us a joy story? So mine's not necessarily one story, but it is about my why. And so anytime I'm working as an administrator with students, oftentimes what are students coming to me for? It's going to be for discipline, discipline yeah. or things that need to be course corrected. Mm -hmm. So being able to connect with a student, um, even though they might be facing some sort of little consequence to, for their actions, 
always making it a learning opportunity, building relationships with them, taking that opportunity to check their grades and say, hey, how's it going in this class? Why don't you have this turned in? Things like that, get to know them. Because one thing I don't think we got to talk about so much with engagement that is just the heart of engaging students is going to be the relationship building Mm -hmm. and having some person, at least a person or some connection on campus for all students. Um, So, you know, finding out if that student who's in my office has someone and if they don't, being that person or finding them someone, getting them connected to a club or an activity that might help them uh, get more engaged in school and just staying on track and then checking in with them, seeing them around campus, having them know me by name, me being able to check in with them by name so that they know that I see them and that I, you know, I care about them and I'm following through. And so I think that is more of the connection to my why rather than one story. But every time I, you know, I work with a student at that level and, you know, it doesn't matter what they're in my office for, I'm always going to do that extra check and get to know them. And I think that that goes a long way. I love that joy lens. You take something that could be perceived as negative, right? That you're talking to them based on behavior or a choice that they made, but you turn it around and form a relationship with them so that they have someone to come back to time and time again. I love that. Chris, what about you? What's a joy story that you have? A joy story that I, you know, always come back to is being able to coach you to be the Florida teacher. (laughs) (laughs) No, um, I, I think the biggest compliment that I've learned from myself in education is when kids come back, Mm -hmm. right? When they're 17, 18 years old, we used to have tons of kids come back. And and I will tell you that it just happened twice at New Heights. And they were kids from Eisenhower. (laughs) I had Lakeisha Davis's Mm -hmm. young boy at my school for a little bit. And and another one of my scholars from my Eisenhower days, kids come in and it was just like, they remember what we do. They remember what class looked like, what Mm -hmm. felt like. They ask about other kids. Like those moments right there, when kids come back to the school that they were at or remember you, that's huge. I mean, Absolutely. how many people do you remember from when you were a kid? And like right. to be one of those people, is, yeah. I think is, is is a big deal. Yeah. Every time that happens to me, I'm like floored. Yeah. So I was like, I, I, I did my job that year. I taught you. Like I, I yeah. didn't go above and beyond in my eyes, but yeah. they like cling to these memories. And huge. Have, yeah, it, you don't it, realize how big some of that stuff is. Yeah. yeah. But like Megan said, it all goes back to relationships. Absolutely. So it's when you take the time to get yeah. to know them and build those relationships with mm-hmm. them. Well, Chris and Megan, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your thoughts about student engagement and how administrators can support that at their schools. I appreciate your insight that you both shared. So thank you guys for being here today. Thank you. I appreciate you giving me the accolades for getting you the floor teacher of the year. You're welcome. I'm glad we had that opportunity. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Thank you for joining us on the Finding Joy in Education podcast. I am joined today with some incredible teachers for our segment called Finding Joy in Education. We just heard from some pretty incredible administrators here in Pinellas County in our Leadership Lens segment. And so as we move into the Finding Joy in Education and in the Classroom segment, I'd like to introduce you to the guests that are here today. I have Miss Nicole Kengott. She is a fifth grade teacher at Plum Elementary and the 2019 Pinellas County Teacher of the Year. Across from me, we have um, Mr. Justin Grimshaw. He is a fifth grade teacher at Orange Grove Elementary School. And then over here, we have Miss Jordan Eckern. She's an eighth grade advanced science and sixth grade AVID elective teacher at Safety Harbor Middle School. So thank you guys for being here today. Thanks. Thank you for the opportunity. You are welcome. So I ask every guest to give us a little bit of context of where they were to where they are today today. And so I'll ask that in the form of asking you what your story is. So Nicole, I'm going to start with you. What's your story? Okay. Well, I'm born and raised in New York and I started working as a job coach, working with deaf adults. And then after I graduated, it was a seamless transition to working at Milnick Manor School for the Deaf. Mm -hmm. I was working with students in high school for the school to work program. Oh wow. And it was it was great. And then about three months into the position, I was told that I was going to be moved to a twelve one four ASD class. Oof. I Oof. was wow. <laughs> wow, you won the lottery. Uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> I was the third teacher oh. who was in that classroom and It is absolutely the foundation Mm -hmm. of who I am as a teacher. Mm -hmm. It I was there for about five or six years. Wow. Absolutely loved it. Learned so much. And then after my husband and I got married, we moved down to Florida. I was at Sandy Lane for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then I've been at Plum for about seven years, primarily in fifth grade. 
Awesome. I can't wait to hear some of those stories and, and how that connects to student engagement in your classroom. Justin, what's your story? Yeah, born and raised here in beautiful Pinellas County, actually St. Petersburg. Um, I'm a product of Pinellas County Schools, first grade through fifth, uh, excuse me, through 12th grade. Um, I am not, I never thought I was going to be a teacher, let's put it this way. I was probably one of the worst students Pinellas <laughs> County ever had. Um, you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Behavior, I was fine. Academ I couldn't understand why academics were important. I didn't understand why education was important. I was great at music. I was trained in jazz drums. Prove and, it. Yeah. I, oh, <laughs> sticks. Um, but yeah, my, my whole outlook was I'm just going to be a musician. That's all I need. Um, ended up Barely, barely graduating, uh, went to college, got a degree, and then worked in the private sector for a long time and was just miserable. Mm. Couldn't really find my meaning in life. Uh, my wife is a teacher. She was teaching first grade, and she asked me one day, you should come in and volunteer. And within 15 minutes, it, and it sounds super corny, but it, I don't know, something inside of me was like, oh, this is what I was, yeah. I was meant to do this. Yeah. Um, went back to school, got my degree, um, and been teaching ever since. Started my career off at New Heights um, in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So I've taught kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. Oh, and wow. It's, it's been an awesome experience. I, I wake up every day just so lucky that I get to do what I get to do. I love it. And I love that light bulb moment that you had where it's just like, you know, when you know. And, yeah. And that that's, I love that. I love that about Yeah. That. And seeing kids that were just like me, I mm -hmm. think that's what spoke to me. I was like, oh, I know that kid because yeah. I was that kid. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And Jordan? Um, I started off my career in animal husbandry. I worked with animals in a vet tech for seven years and I loved it. Um, but then I became a parent <laughs> and I think that my journey was meant to take on the role of a teacher because I was already teaching in my role as a vet tech. Um, but my daughter was getting to school age and I knew that I wanted to be part of what she was going to be part of mm -hmm. for the next 13 years of her life. Sure. And I decided um, middle school science was all I started off in high school. I was a high school fill-in for one year at Palm Harbor University High School. Okay. Absolutely loved it, but it was just a year for um, a teacher who was out on maternity leave. So when I returned, in the when they they asked me to continue my position, and I was, um, but as a chemistry teacher, and mm -hmm. I was like, mm, I'm not sure, so sure. So I went to middle school science and started off at Tarpon Middle School, and I loved it there for four years, but then had another child <laughs> and wanted to be closer to home. So I live in Safety Harbor, okay. I work in Safety Harbor. My children go to Safety Harbor Elementary and, safe, and Countryside High School. And I love where I teach. Yes. I love the people I work with. I love my community. And I think being a teacher within my community is an important part of it. Oh, that's for such me. a special, that's such a special thing to be a teacher in the community that you live in, I think is just, I love that. And just a little shout out, my my son was one of Miss Eckern's students in the past, and he actually recommended her for this <laughs> podcast when I asked him to talk about student engagement. Um, I couldn't even finish the question before he recommended that I have Miss Eckern on. So I'm so grateful to have you here Thank today. You. So guys, I want to talk about student engagement. That's our topic for today. And I want to ask some clarifying questions of how does it bring joy to education? So I know it's a very blank question, a blanket question and kind of broad. So give me some specifics. How does student engagement or how can student engagement bring joy to education? And we'll just kind of go around the table. So, Nicole? I think it's really important to be creating an environment that children want to be in and understand that's going to be changing depending on the, the generation that we have in front of us. And I also want to create an environment that I want to be in. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think it's really important for me that no matter what hat I'm wearing, I'm me first. So whether I'm Nicole, the teacher, Nicole, the mom, Nicole, the coworker, Nicole, the mentor, I'm going to put my personality in whatever that I'm doing. And I really hope that I can model that for my students as well. And I think with so many things that are changing and with social media and with the social anxieties and this really high rise in apathy, I think it's really important to have collaboration be a way of work in your classes because, you know, we learn so much about social skills when yes. you're in kindergarten and first grade, and then it, it can't stop there because it's it's changing. Their environments are changing. The way that they're socializing is, is changing, and I want to really create that safe space for them to be having accountable talk, to be disagreeing with each other in a respectful way, mm -hmm. to be able to think of something clear 
easier to be able to say when they do disagree with somebody that's more than bra. Right? <laughs> exactly. Like to have something that they <laughs> yeah. can have their own thoughts and understand that that's really powerful. Yeah. So when they can practice that with me, I'm hoping that they can really instill that skill and take it regardless of whatever road they go down. Absolutely. So it sounds like get them here, make them want to be here, but mm-hmm. then also see how this is applicable outside of here. Absolutely. So come here, I'm going to teach you this, and then this is going to come with you for life. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. And that's, you're going to have more buy-in. You're going to have more buy-in mm-hmm. from the students, from the parents. Like, we're a team here. Yeah. And I, I want them to be invested in what we're doing. Yes. So, Justin, um, how does student engagement bring joy to your classroom? What does that look like? Ownership. Yeah. It's really what it would be. Um, I tell the kids that all the time. Like, this is this is not my education. This is your education. Mm-hmm. And all the things that you're getting here, all the skill sets that you're collecting, you can use those throughout your entire life. And it, we, we have to, I, like I tell them all the time, don't get hung up on just like, oh, this is math, this is ELA. No, these are these are things that are applicable to all things. Because really what we're talking about is, can you set a goal? Do you believe in the goal? Do you mm-hmm. believe in yourself that you can actually do this? Can you set up a time frame to where you can actually accomplish this? And then when mistakes happen, then what do you do? We, we're big in our class about being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yes. And I think that's one of the major things with student engagement is, if the teacher holds on to everything, nothing gets done. But when it's just all on them and you're there more as a facilitator. Call, yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm your ride or die. Right. Like, no matter what happens, <laughs> I got your back. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, though, but you are going to do this and you and you can do this. Yeah. So kind of giving that free space to really own their education. I love it. Ownership is huge for me. It's something I've spoken about um, across the state, but I think also you kind of tapped into like what a master teacher is going to do, and that's going to send the ownership over to the students because when you hit that part in the year, and for some it's very early on, and for some it takes a while, but when you hit that part, it's golden yeah, where you can absolutely. pass it to them and you are more of a facilitator, the ride or die, absolutely. right? But they're driving. Right. They're the ones doing it. Right. I, I think that's that's what we want in our teachers and, you know, our, our district supports that, Absolutely. supports elevating teachers to get to that status that you are handing that ownership over yeah. to your students. Absolutely. Um, Ms. Eckern, sorry, Jordan, <laughs> 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 tell me about what student engagement looks like in the middle school. So we've got two fifth grade teachers and now we have a middle school teacher. But I can say that it looks a lot like fifth grade, Good. especially for eighth graders, yes. because they are looking at high school. They are looking at the responsibilities of being and owning that GPA mm-hmm. and that those skills that they're going to need to be successful in AP and those higher level academic classes. So it looks like my students taking full responsibility over their lessons. When I produce something, I want them to, I want to be the facilitator. I want to be that person in the room that is watching and checking. I don't want to be the one that's talking Mm -hmm. all of the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lucky that I'm a middle school science teacher because I think that it lends itself to hands-on learning so much. And when the students are using their hands and they're collaborating on a lab, they are using all the skills that they've learned in fifth grade and sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And especially when I'm talking about like students that have had me in sixth grade and then I see them again in eighth grade, I see that responsibility level increasing and that engagement in their learning and understanding that they have to own their learning. Yes. It cannot be anybody but their their sole responsibility. And it sounds like point. a common thread between what the three of you have already shared is that, that shared ownership, right? Yes. And also I heard um, kind of what you were saying about who's doing all the talking, because I've heard it said that whoever's doing most of the talking is doing most of the learning. Mm-hmm. And if that's you as the teacher, you're doing it wrong, Mm -hmm. right? So like giving that chance where students are now the ones that are coming up and leading the discussions. And Mr. Grimshaw, um, I know I've seen this in your classroom about students leading discussions. Can you tell us a little bit about um, a student engagement strategy that you use called Socratic Seminars? Yeah, um, I've been using it for quite a while now. I started using it with second graders um, and it's uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth. yeah, essentially what it is, is you put your, uh, physically, you put your students in a circle. Um, I, you could give them a ball. I don't, we try not to do that because we're trying to work on more social skills of saying mm-hmm. like, excuse me, I'd like to add on to you. I'd like to, you know, 
But I pose a question. Um, sometimes it can be TDQs from an ELA uh, unit. It could be a math problem, um, science problem. A lot of times it's social skills problems. You know, like what does empathy mean mm. in a classroom? You know, what, what does perseverance really mean? And then students at their ready, they just start discussing, um, which is really interesting because a lot of kids that would never speak before now want to be engaged. They want to have their input and then they want to disagree with if, if People obviously have a difference of opinion. It's also really cool, too, because then you can pull out that evidence, right? So instead of me going, right, that's right, and you guys should – I would just keep asking the question, well, where did you get that fact? Where did you get this? Show me where in the text. Can you tell us where? And then the kids start doing it, which is so <laughs> cool to watch them and because it helps a lot, too. We see this in writing, right? So, like, you know, if you have to write a multi-paragraph essay and you have to find sources and find elaboration, when you can do that in a Socratic circle – the writing is very simple after you can have that full sure. engaged conversation. And it's it's amazing to see them use the vocabulary that we use in school. They're now projecting out because they're sitting a little straighter. Right. They they feel more mature. Essentially, I'm telling them you're you're old enough to do something. Yes. This in their eyes, it's very mature, <laughs> which is great because that's where the buy in is they're like, OK, now I'm part of a Socratic circle. And I love that you said you've done it from second grade yeah. up because we will get pushback sometimes from the um, primary grades. Mm -hmm. Right. Saying, well, maybe fifth graders can do that, but these kids can't. And I think it ties back to what Nicole said about giving them a safe space to speak, mm -hmm. but giving them those skills. So I'm sure it's highly structured in the oh, beginning. Game, Absolutely. Right. Like you are modeling exactly what this looks like and probably providing those sentence stems for them Absolutely. till eventually it becomes more authentic and organic and they're doing it on their own. It is. And I would even add to the hardest part with Socratic circles has nothing to do with the children. It's it's <laughs> us getting out of the way. Psychologically, yeah. giving that much control to a classroom mm -hmm. and being able to have it be messy. Like I started off playing jazz drums. And in a jazz band, this is how it operates. You show up to a gig, somebody starts playing, you kind of know, you know what you're doing, right? You know the basics, but where it goes, it's up to the group. And sometimes it doesn't look fancy or like put together, but it evolves into something that is so authentic. And that's where the real learning comes from. And I try to tell other teachers all the time, like, it's okay if you're uncomfortable. If it's cringy, if you're like, oh my gosh, I want to jump in. Don't. Just breathe. When you show them that you're uncomfortable, they feed off of that Absolutely. and then they just shut down. Yeah. I, I don't even sit in the circle. I always stand away from it. Mm. And a lot of times I'll even like body language will turn <laughs> a little bit. So it's like, I'm not even listening to you. Right. Guys. And that's when you really start hearing that. But yes, I agree. There's a lot of groundwork that must be laid in sure. before you start something like that. Yeah. Nicole, what's one of your go-to student engagement strategies? How do you get your students talking and, and owning the learning? So Socratic seminar is absolutely one of the biggest things that I do. We do a lot of World Cafe, Bend the yes. Line, different things like that. But I think it doesn't really matter which collaboration structure you're using. It's more important that it's just becoming your way of work. Mm. And I agree. In the beginning, it's, it is. It can be. It could be tough. It could be different personalities, but a lot of that you can help to drive your instruction. Mm -hmm. So we've got our standards. We know what we need to be teaching, but use the students, use the group who's in front of you to help lead what it is to meet their needs of where they are. But at this point in the year, it's it's just a way of work in my mm -hmm. class. So we have all flexible seating. It looks like a little Google headquarters and everybody's <laughs> kind of in their groups. But a big reason that I started that way for the environment to look was based on collaborative structures mm -hmm. because that was my way of teaching. And then it just lends itself to the kids to be able to work together more. But I think it's just something that you can't just have when you've got an administrator right. coming in to Absolutely. observe. It, it really needs to become part of the culture and community in your classroom for it to really have that authenticity in it. Yeah, I love it. And I think sometimes providing those boundaries in the beginning allows for creativity later Absolutely. because they know what to expect, but now can play it a little bit with it and finesse it a little mm -hmm. bit to make it work. And I'm sure it looks different year to year in your room as well because you have right. a whole different group of students sitting and, in front of you. And then over time, they start to hold each other accountable, yes. which is really cool to see. So somebody who might be a little bit more quiet in the beginning of the year, you might have like talking pieces or something, but then it starts to be that they're holding each other accountable. And that's how you get that real community Community within your classroom, mm -hmm. that it's not so teacher driven, but it's really because, no, we're in this together. Let's make sure all voices are heard. That's great. Jordan, what does student engagement look like? What are some of your go-to strategies? My absolute favorite is 
every day when my students come in the classroom, there is an attendance question. Mm -hmm. We start off hearing every single voice in the classroom and making sure that everybody's listening to one another from the outset so that when questions come up, when discussions need to be had, everybody values each other's opinions because middle schoolers, they become very tuned out from each other. Mm -hmm. They can very much say, well, those are the smart people or these are the the people I'm not going to listen to. Mm -hmm. And I don't allow for that in my classroom. I think it's really important that you hear every voice, even if it's like, how was your weekend or how was the, or what was the best thing that you learned in your math class today? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be about my science course, but it can be about anything that they are related or can relate to, even Starbucks versus Duncan, you know, in the beginning of the year, just to get to know who my students are yeah. and with a question every single day. And then structures for inquiry, just questioning after questioning after questioning and having the students build their questions and answer their own questions and use those for the dialogue mm-hmm. of their conversations. Mm-hmm. So I need you to give a question and you need to answer their question and then they give you a question and you answer their question so that everybody is engaged in their own personal learning, but in a very structured way Mm -hmm. so that everybody is accountable. That's so great. That's so great. Um, So I want to talk just real quick before we wrap this up, how student engagement has evolved over time. So think back to even just five, four, three years ago, what student engagement looked like compared to what it looks like now. And how do we um, give advice to current teachers for how to reach their students? And this is open to any of you, if anyone has anything to share about that evolution of student engagement. I think, again, it goes back to to being you and putting your personality in, in what it is that you're doing. And, and it's important to be looking for ideas from other teachers, but you have to really follow that teacher instinct to be doing what's best for your students. And if you can lead with that then you're not going to get burnout mm-hmm. because if anything, you're going to be energized because you're so true to yourself and what you know is best for the students. And if you're leading with that and you're leading with your heart and you're looking for joy, then all the other pieces just just really do fall into place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say, especially for anyone who's new to this profession, film yourself teaching. <laughs> I, I was so fortunate when I worked at New Heights to have so many great instructional coaches that fostered this idea of, and it was never like a gotcha. It was, hey, you should put a camera in your room just for you, watch it, and then ask yourself, who's really doing all the heavy Mm -hmm. lifting here? Mm -hmm. You know, and it was, you know, I I didn't know what I didn't know. You know, and I think it was one of those things where after seeing that, I was like, oh my gosh, (laughs) okay. (laughs) So now what? I would also say too, you also have to really know the curriculum. Like if you don't really know the curriculum, and you don't know all the different questions that you would ask a student, and if there's surprises and you're like, oh, now what do I, that can go really wrong. So I think, you know, with student engagement also has to be, and I agree 100% with you, is the teacher engaged? Yeah. Are you just going through the motions or is this the thing that like you come to school every day like, I can't wait to do this. Is the teacher engaged and is the teacher prepared? And I think intentionality has to be behind student engagement because it can go south very quickly in regards to student engagement if it's not intentional and based on the outcomes that you're looking for, which is the standards, the benchmarks, the brevity of the content limitations, knowing that I only need to go this far with this and this is the structure I'm going to provide to help students get there. Um, Jordan, did you have anything you wanted to add about that? All I want to say is that you need to use your human resources. The Mm -hmm. teachers that have been doing this and doing it well around you, find somebody that you enjoy working with and that can look at your lessons before you do and look at knowing the students that you have Mm -hmm. and say, this is going to work really well, or this might be where you need to adjust. And our instructional coaches. Yes. Those are the, use the people because they go to other schools, they see other lessons, they know things that work and use those people to make sure that you are providing the most authentic and Mm -hmm. engaging and interesting lesson that you can to the students because they have so many other things that they are interested in and want to be engaged in. So you really have to work at being 
in being excited yes. about the things that you're teaching, right. using even your tone of voice mm-hmm. and using your body movement, yeah. and using your <laughs> posture. Yeah. All of those things are so important to show the students that you really care as much as your words are saying. Absolutely. So as we wrap up this segment, I always like to end with joy stories. And so I'm going to ask the three of you to reflect for a moment and think of either a student, a colleague, an administrator, anyone that you've encountered that when you think back on this story, it connects you back to your why, why you are an educator and why you are still an educator. So Jordan, I'm going to start with you and and swing this way. So share your joy story. Um, I have a student this year who has not always been successful in science, you know, and he sees me first, first period in the morning. And he, after a lab that we did for photosynthesis, he came in the next block and was like, are we doing a lab again? (laughs) And I was like, "Um, actually, we are today. I hope that's okay." And he goes, no, that is so exciting. That's why I'm here today. Oh, Oh my gosh. And so I was so incredibly surprised by that comment. And he has worked so hard to understand the material and to participate fully. Mm -hmm. And he even went after our third lab, that same unit, and was like, I've never had this experience in science. I've never had this many things oh that I've gosh. got to do yeah. and be engaged with. And it was so heartwarming to me um, to see his grade improve yeah. over the course of the of over the course of the year so far, going from a, a low level performer to a completely engaged, enthusiastic student. And all it took was that intentional planning of giving him opportunities to experience it firsthand. So it's not you doing it, but him doing it. Absolutely. I love that. Justin, joy story. Yeah, I, man, I'm fortunate. I have a lot of really awesome stories. One um, comes to mind this year. I have a student who, he was a lot like me. Um, definitely doesn't do homework, second, third, fourth grade. That was not for him. Video games were his deal. <laughs> um, he came into my room and I met him with data. You know, this is where you currently are. Where do you want to be? Like, is are you happy here? Do you want to be here? You know, and I, he told me, I want to be here, but I don't think I could. And I was like, well, no, no, you totally can because it's just, we'll just set goals and we're going to get you there. Make a long story short, this is a kid who wouldn't do any homework till on Sunday nights he does homework. So on Sundays he's doing 60 to 70 I station minutes. Um, not because he's getting anything from me. There's no reward. It's all intrinsic. And I asked him the other day, I was like, you know, how does that feel to have everything put into place and have your goals, you know, you're, you're starting to meet your goals, you know, and big smile on his face. (laughs) He gets all teary eyed. You know, it's the first time in his life that he's, he's seen that he's worth investing in. And I think that's what really, what makes this job amazing is showing human beings that if you invest in yourself, good things are going to come your way, but you have to put it in. You know, you have to do that work first. I love that. That's so beautiful. Nicole, Joy Story. It's hard to pick one. I know. (laughs) I I really think that, you know, teaching's hard. So I think it's really important that you're looking for opportunities to find joy throughout your day all the time, having a gratitude practice all the time in all areas of life, because that's going to really help you going. So I think I'm going to put a little spin on it. And my focus, honestly, the last couple of years has been finding joy or trying to to bring more joy back to the educators. Mm. Um, I think that we, we talk a lot about this being a really, it's, it's so challenging for our kids and the epidemic and everything. And well, it's also really hard for a lot of the working parents who are also teachers um, and it, things are changing so quickly. Mm-hmm. So how can we help to instill that? Or some of these brand new teachers who are coming in who are hearing from so many people, how could you become a teacher? Don't become right. a teacher. Like right. here, go become an influencer and make mm-hmm. millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Like why would you want to become a teacher? Like don't do that. And it's like, no, the, the, I think that's the group we really need to be pouring pouring into. Um, or even just talking to more some of the parents who are just just feeling like my kids in trouble again. Yeah. My kids yeah. in trouble like and being a support for them. So I truly find most of my joy right now when like I was at DWT on Friday and I had um, a, a new young teacher come up to me and she was like, you know, I've been to a lot of your trainings and like <laughs> it's it's really had a really big impact on me. It's always positive, it's always engaging and you know, going back to trying to be like who I am 
first, it's a, it's really important for me, whether I'm in school, in the classroom, with my friends, or, um, you know, talking on Instagram. I really yeah. want to make sure that I'm just bringing excitement back to sure. whatever path people are trying to do. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we, we get surrounded by negativity so quickly. And I've said this before, negativity breeds negativity, but mm-hmm. joy breeds joy. Absolutely. They're equally contagious. Okay. And I think our job is to spread that joy and to make our colleagues feel that joy, make our students feel that joy. But I love that you focused on our colleagues because that is our culture and climate right now. And it's, it's a truth that we're living, but we can be the light. We can be the joy. We can be the positive. It's an intentional, just like planning for student engagement. It's an intentional stance that you have to take every single day. It's a decision you make every single day when you step onto your campus. Um, I just want to thank you three so much for sharing your expertise with us today, Nicole, Justin, and Jordan. Thank you for being here and sharing your insight. And I appreciate hearing all your joy stories and the ways that you leverage student engagement in your classroom. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. You're listening to Finding Joy in Education. This is episode three, Finding Joy Through Student Engagement. We just heard from some pretty incredible teachers here in Pinellas County, and we're moving into our segment called Teach Hacks, where we hear from experts in the field sharing their advice and their expertise. And today it's all about student engagement. Joining me today is Kim Hill, the director of the Office of Student Experience, and Ms. Stacy Pellerin Vanderloop, an instructional technology coordinator here in Pinellas County. So ladies, before we get started, I always ask every guest to tell me their story. So when I ask you what's your story, I want you to give us a little context of where you started to where you are. So Stacy, what's your story? So my story is, when I was a young girl, I loved playing school with my friends. I would make worksheets and math problems up. I just loved taking that role. But as I got older, I started thinking about going more in the route of like family law or social work. But I stayed grounded in the fact that school was always my safe place. Mm -hmm. It was my consistent place where I could go and I trusted it. And my teacher was like always there for me. And I wanted to be that for other students. So... When I made my decision to go to college, I majored in elementary education with a minor in specific learning disabilities, Mm -hmm. and that's how I ended up there. So you spent how many years in the classroom? I was in the classroom for 20 plus years. Wow. And then what led you to the position that you're currently holding here in Pinellas County? So even in the classroom, I enjoyed using technology and to engage my students. And I was pretty good with figuring out technology platforms. And so when the opportunity came up to be a coach, I thought, hey, I could help other teachers find the passion of using technology and leveraging that to keep students engaged in the classroom. Love it. I'm, and I'm so very grateful that you did step into that role because I have firsthand been able to benefit from your expertise on that end. Uh, Kim, what's your story? So believe it or not, Sarah, um, Education was not my initial path. (laughs) Um, Growing up, I wanted to be a meteorologist. I had a thing for weather. I just wanted to be a meteorologist. um, But as I um, went into high school, becoming an athlete, um, I really want my journey led to possibly sports medicine. Mm -hmm. Um, The end of High school, I ended up took a job at the YMCA, and I was a camp counselor, and I worked before and after school care, and I just made connections with kids right yeah. off the bat, and it was started getting me thinking of like, gosh, I could, I could even have a job that right, gives me could, the summers off. This could be my job. This could be my <laughs> job. Um, so I, I changed my path, and so when I started college, I decided. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what led me to um, that path. And I was lucky. I started off teaching at South Ward Elementary School. I've heard of that school. In fact, I heard that there's some legend about this incredible intern that you had while you were out South Ward. Would you share a little bit about this legendary um, intern that you took on? I did have this legendary intern, and I believe that her name was Sarah Smart at the time that she was interning with me, who is now Sarah Painter. (laughs) 
<laughs> so yes, Sarah was um, my intern while she was um, fit doing her final internship mm -hmm. and took over my classroom, not without... Um, you know, I have a little control issues. A little, little bit, little just bit. a little bit. That's a whole nother issue. podcast. That, yes. That's a whole nother <laughs> podcast. But um, I do, I was blessed to have you as an intern and that, you know, led me to helping grow adults yes. too. So stepping out and when I wanted to go for my master's administration was not it. Um, I wanted to be a curriculum specialist. I wanted to do that. And somebody talked to me out of that and yeah. said, you need to go into ed educational leadership. You have a niche for being a teacher leader. And I think that reminds me a lot of what we do for students. They have one idea of their strengths and we can kind of have this separate lens of what we see and leveraging those strengths to push them towards something maybe they hadn't thought about, but that they are so rightfully skilled to do. Mm -hmm. And I think about your journey. I mean, as your intern, I feel like I learned more with you in those beginning years than any other uh, time under any other leadership because you had what it took. You believed in me. And at the time, I thought you were kind of like pushing me out of the nest too quickly, but I learned so much because of the faith that you had in me. And I think that that's not necessarily true of every administrator or someone who takes on an intern. So I'm very grateful for the way that you lead. And I think our district is grateful for the way that you lead. So, so you went from classroom to administration, and then how did you end up in this position that you're in now? So after 18 years as a building level administrator, I, I was ready to try something different. Um, I was very blessed to be in two amazing schools as a school principal, but I was ready for a new challenge. Mm -hmm. And this position came open and I thought that this speaks to me. Other people said to me, Kim, this job speaks to you. Mm. And, and I believe in Mr. Hendrick's vision. I believe in his, um, vision of a hundred percent student success, but also, um, student engagement yes. and student experiences and wanting kids to have fun in school and challenging them. And so I, I thought, my here's my time. Yeah. Here's my time. So Kim, thinking about that um, accessibility so that no matter talent um, behind every student, that they have access to this um, opportunity for student engagement, speak a little bit to that. Um, I think the game changer was us moving to one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. Um, Elaborate for our listeners who may not know about our so, district. So um, post, post pandemic, mm -hmm. um, w our district has moved to a one to one computer device for our students in grades first grade and up, yeah. um, which has been instrumental in access and equity for all of our students. Um, families that have needed um, support with even internet support, we've been able to be blessed to be able to do that. So all of these cool applications that we have in technology resources at our fingertips, every student has access yes. to that, which is paramount mm -hmm. um, to not only um, having access, but it's also preparing our kids for the next generation. Future ready. Yep. Yeah, absolutely future yep. ready. So um, I think that has just been an absolute game changer um, for us as a district but also what we're doing for our students. Yes. So Stacy, Kim talked about supporting students this way. What supports are there for teachers then? And I know you just presented on this at our district-wide training, but how do we support our teachers in using these student engagement things that are at our, at our fingertips? So that's where these instructional technology coaches come in. Um, this is a position that's funded by referendum money. And there is an instructional technology coach that is assigned to every school in Pinellas County. We can be, um, you can contact us and we can come out. We can either work with you on the side, a teacher on the side, or we can present to your students on any of the platforms that are supported by Pinellas County Schools. And we are all very passionate about this and patient too. So wherever you are, it, as far as like your journey with using technology, we can be patient and work with that. And I love it. So teachers, you heard that here. If you are a Pinellas County teacher and you're looking for support on using these digital tools, please reach out to your 
instructional technology coordinator. Coach, yeah. Coach. Yeah. And how would they find who's assigned to their school? How can they, do they email someone? I think their best uh, bet would just go to their library media That's specialist and they're our contact person. Sure. They, they know who we are and they can put you in touch. Perfect. The best part about our coaches, our tech coaches, is that they support students they support teachers, and they support leaders. Nice. And I think that they just kind of run the gamut mm -hmm. of how they can provide those technology supports. They can model a lesson, but they can also work in a PLC with, with a group of teachers on learning, learning a new platform or a new trick or sitting one-on-one -on -one with an administrator them trying to figure out how they can monitor all the tech supports. I love in. it. So really our administrators can be leveraging your expertise as Absolutely. well to move their school along as well. Well, ladies, before we end our segment, I love to hear Joy's stories. And this is a story that when you look back on it from your teaching career, from any time in education, it connects you to your why and it grounds you in why you are an educator. So I would love for each of you to share um, some Joy stories of either students, colleagues, administrators, someone that when you look back on that story, it brings you joy surrounded in education. Stacy, would you like to go first? Sure. So remember my why was I wanted to stay connected to students and it's about that building relationships with students. So when I was in the classroom, that was easy to do because they were with me for the whole day. I was able to build relationships. I would see them years later. In fact, right before I left the classroom, I had one of my former students' daughters was in my fifth grade <laughs> class, and I was like, okay. Um, and, she, you know, she was like, oh, my gosh, you were my favorite uh, fifth grade teacher at the time. But um, I thought when I came to the district, I was like, oh, I'm going to be detached from these mm. students because, you know, I'm in and out of 37 different schools. Right. But— I go in, I teach them a platform like Book Creator. The kids get so excited. Maybe a month later, I'm back on the campus and the kids will be like walking from lunch and I'll be waiting at their door for like the next lesson. They'll be like, Miss Stacy's here, <laughs> Miss Stacy's here. And they're just excited to see me and they remembered me. So That's, I didn't lose my why. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Cam, what about you, Joy Story? So I think it's hard to pick one. Um, in... I have those students that I taught oh so many years ago. We won't we won't talk about that. <laughs> um, I, I had one particular. He was in my second my second class that I ever taught, and he reached out to me several months ago, and he just wanted me to know the impact that I had on him, and where others weren't believing in him, I believed in mm -hmm. him, and he shared with me what he's doing now. And that that really, that resonates with you because sometimes you don't realize it in the moment, right. the impact that you're making on your students. But I've also been blessed as an administrator and a leader in this district to be able to have connections with teachers yes. too, and being able to have that coach hat on yes. and not always the evaluator hat. And, and that, you know, ties to what our superintendent, Mr. Hendrick shared when he was on, and that is that great teachers fix most of our problems. Absolutely. And so when we have great administrators that acknowledge, elevate, and recognize great teachers and pour in and coach them continually. And support them. And support them. That is what makes our schools thrive. It's all set on that precipice of great teachers and pouring into them. So that's so precious. Absolutely. I but I, I, we, we can't finish without my, one of my joys is your success Aww. because I am blessed that I have been part of your journey mm -hmm. and seeing the work and the impact and the ambassador you are for public, public education right now brings me joy. You so are you need, so kind. You Thank need to know you. that. I'm just, I'm so lucky to work in a district that recognizes excellence in education. And I'm not talking about teacher of the year. I'm talking about what we do in our classrooms day in and day out. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the support of coaches and administrators and district leaders I think we are so very blessed in Pinellas County to have that support from the top down. And I can tell you that it's not like that everywhere. So thank you again for your time today. Thank you for coming in and sharing your joy stories and your own stories and just giving us context to understand who we are as a district and the support that you guys have given us. So I appreciate you both so much.
Thank you for listening to episode three, Finding Joy Through Student Engagement. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to be a future guest on the podcast, please email us at podcast at pcsb.org. As you are leaving, please listen to my colleagues from around the country. I pose the prompt, how does student engagement bring joy to education? And here's how they responded. Do you want student achievement? Of course you do. You're a teacher. We all want our students to achieve their goals, but how do they get there? That's where the engagement comes into play. Achievement is the outcome. Engagement is the road to getting there. My name is Brooke Whittington. I'm a former Gilchrist County District Teacher of the Year, and I am 2023 top five finalist for Florida Teacher of the Year. There is no greater joy in education than looking out amongst the students in your classroom and seeing that they are hanging on to every word you are saying. And let me just tell you, whenever you get your students to that point, whenever they are fully engaged in everything they are doing and watching and waiting to see what you're going to teach them next, they're learning. And once they've learned, nobody can take that away from them. Hi, my name is Carrie Johnson. And in 2022, I had the honor of being selected as the Sarasota County District Teacher of the Year, as well as top five finalists for the state. Student engagement, I believe, is the heartbeat of education. When students are actively involved in their learning, magic happens. It's not just about learning and retaining information, but it's about creating connections, igniting curiosity, and thinking critically. Each relationship made, each idea discovered, and each problem worked through adds a layer of excitement to a student's educational experience. Engaged students are truly able to take ownership of their learning, which in turn adds so much value into their classroom. Their enthusiasm is contagious, infusing the learning environment with energy and passion. This engagement leads to both students and educators finding joy, fostering a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment. Embracing engagement is the key to unlocking the joy of education, where every moment becomes an opportunity to learn, grow, and thrive together. Student engagement in education brings me joy because of the lifelong influences it has on our students. The impact it has on social, developmental, and academic growth is immeasurable. The power to create lifelong learners, instill confidence, and prepare citizens who are active participants resides in part with student engagement. Lessons that foster curiosity, interest, and optimism lead to passion and motivation. Passion and motivation lead to student products like these National History Day projects, which illustrate students' ability to practice valuable interdisciplinary literacy and communication skills, extend their thinking, and use their voice. Student engagement brings me joy because it fosters social competence and skills that support decision making and problem solving. Because it helps students learn how to evaluate information and think critically about what they are learning and gain the skills necessary to navigate in our world. I am Jennifer Jaso, the 2023 Sarasota County Teacher of the Year. Hi, my name is Jessica Salm and I am the 2022 Arkansas Teacher of the Year. When I think about finding joy through student engagement, I think about how students are willing to take risks when they feel like they are learning in a safe and supportive environment. And when they feel safe and supported, they are going to feel more positive emotions like joy. And when students have joy and they're willing to take those risks and try new things and do the hard work, as an educator, that brings me so much joy. Creating spaces that students want to learn, they feel safe to learn, and they are encouraged to try new, very difficult things gives me joy in learning and leading through student engagement. Hello, my name is Anthony Swan, and I'm the 2021 Virginia State Teacher of the Year. How does student engagement bring joy to education? Students have every right to feel a part of their learning. Um, a lot of times we as educators, we like to lecture and do all the talking, but I found through the years that it's okay for you to stop talking and allow children to collaborate about their own learning. Sometimes children learn best from one another. So it's very important that we as educators sometimes take the backseat and facilitate the learning and just 
or her presence in the room while the children take reins and control of what they are actually learning so the teacher can help everyone in the room be successful. Thank you. My name is Kelly Shrine and I am the 2022 Alaska State Teacher of the Year. Student engagement and motivation, as we all know, is the key to enhancing learning outcomes. When educators are tying in learning opportunities that are hands-on, personal, relational to students' lives and the world around them, students are more invested in the lessons we are teaching. And when we as teachers see our students grasping new learning concepts and having those aha moments, um, it brings us joy in knowing that we are reaching them at new levels of learning that are at a higher engagement, which is why it's critical to use high leverage practices in our teaching methods, including positivity and opportunities to respond for academic engagement. We should be helping students anchor their thinking and learning in a way that balances interactive components and reflective experiences that meet their diverse needs. We want our students to love school and enjoy what and how they are learning. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany Brown and I am the 2022 Sumter County Teacher of the Year. I just want to start off by saying that student engagement and joy go hand in hand. When students are fully engaged in their learning, they're motivated, they want to be there, they want to learn, they're actively participating. They are building those critical thinking skills by taking ownership of their learning. They're collaborating with their peers. And as a teacher, as an educator, there is no greater feeling than seeing all of those amazing things taking place in the classroom. Hello, I am Melissa Matz, the 2023 Florida Teacher of the Year. Student engagement brings joy to education by building a community of learning. When students are engaged, they are actively participating in discussions, activities, and projects. This involvement brings joy and excitement to the learning process. Engaged students ask questions, seek out information, and are motivated to learn more, which can lead to discovering new interests and passions. Engagement often fosters a sense of connection and collaboration among students. Overall, student engagement is essential for creating a positive and joyful learning experience where students are actively involved, curious, connected and motivated to learn. Hello, I'm Monica Worsley and I'm the 2022 Monroe County School District Teacher of the Year. And I'm gonna share real quickly how I believe that student engagement infuses joy into education. I think this happens because it transforms the learning experience from a passive one to an active one. And in this active learning experience, students are working on hard work, they're collaborating with their peers, they're making mistakes, they're allowed to make mistakes, and they're learning from those mistakes. Um, I also believe that it creates personal relevance and that connects to the students' lives and to their future goals, which makes them excited for learning. It also helps develop a sense of achievement and that sense of achievement is tied directly to intrinsic motivation. This intrinsic motivation helps to fuel curiosity and creativity, it builds resiliency, and it helps to develop a passion for learning. All of these things together help explain how student engagement definitely infuses joy into education for both the student and the teacher. Thank you for allowing me to share with you today. I'm Morgan Rankin. I'm the 2022 Tennessee Teacher of the Year. Student engagement is the ultimate achievement in teaching and there's lots of joy in that. I can get a student to listen and to work on assignments, but when students are engaged with what we're learning, it means their curiosity has been sparked and that they truly care about what we're learning. Then they're motivated to figure something out and that is priceless to a teacher. These moments often come from my own engagement in what we're teaching. My favorite trick is to tell students that a lesson or a tricky math question is my favorite one and I can't wait to teach them. My enthusiasm is contagious and those little ears perk right up.